Hi, my name is Arlo Moon. I was going to start doing some vlogging, and uh, I actually uploaded a video in 2012. Um, and then I was realizing, I mean, it was really great to have 100 and something views on it. Um, but I really thought to myself, why bother? You know, I could get back to this. It would be cool. But um, I was interested in just posting to Facebook, basically. And I was active in doing a lot of, um, you know, art shows and making a lot of pieces of art. And now I'm kind of because um, really just started watching some more YouTube stuff. I really kind of wanted to get more into it. And I, I was fortunate enough to meet somebody at a place I work at. That actually has a channel, and I've learned more about it in the last uh, month, basically, than I ever have before, um, just by Googling it. <laughs> it seems ridiculous that I wouldn't have looked this up before, but I just never got around to it. Didn't think about it. Didn't think there was any money in it. I want to make some money. It'd be great. But basically, um, I just thought cataloging everything would be... Just, making visual cataloging of it would have been better than just posting just to Facebook. Um... So I made that mistake in a way of not doing that until now. I just thought, you know, whatever. But anyway, so this is where I'm at right now. I just wanted to introduce myself essentially in this first... Uh, I'm going to make some skits. I have a bunch of stuff in the works as far as um, brainstorming and ideas. That doesn't mean it's a completed video, right? Um, but I do have a lot of ideas. I'm a creative person, so once I start getting into a subject or something, I like to brainstorm on a subject, whether it produces anything that's... Um, real or whatever, um, any product out of it, I don't know, but I, I, that's something I really love doing. So um, I have a ton of ideas that I'm going to do, not just vlogs, because I think that can be kind of stale. Maybe this one will will um, really be stale, I'm not sure if anybody cares or what, but hopefully um, there'll be an interest. Um, but basically, I'm a visual artist, uh, that's what I determine it to be. Um, I essentially do mixed media currently right now. Um, pop art is my focus. Essentially, it's come down to a lot more portraits, single portraits in the recent time frame. There's all kinds of things going on all the time. But um, I have different pulls from different angles and different things going on all the time that I'm interested in. But that was essentially kind of my uh, focus for a long time was single portraits. They, they seem to go over with people. And unfortunately, of course, that might seem lame to some people, but... I kind of, um, you know, I want to have the connection with people. That's something that's interesting um, interesting to me. I'm interested in, you know, if we can combine those together, that's what I got right there. But basically, um, so I, I'm drawn to that a little bit, you know, trying to do single portraits. They really they really come across to the, the consumer or any but patrons or just in general, people are just looking at it, right? A lot more than uh, collage work, um, although I really love doing collage work. I love combining things together. A lot in, in the history of what I've been doing in six years, it's almost seven this year, um, as far as showing. Um, um, a lot of people try to overanalyze things or they try to see into it what it really means or and a lot of it's random. So it's, you know, combinations of different, you know, pop people or different things I put together, color combinations. A lot of times that's random. It's just how you felt in the moment and whatever you were doing. I like that in the moment thinking. Um, it's not what I always apply. There's different processes and approaches. But I just wanted in this first video just to introduce myself basically. Give a, a, a kind of, I'm tempting to do a short synopsis of what I've, how I came about and whatever. So basically I live right now in uh, Columbus, Ohio. Um, I got here essentially because um, I have kids and I was... Uh, I wasn't married, but um, the ex-wife um, now that I have, was married for 10 years with her. Um, I came back to basically see my son, my first son, you know. Um, and I was just in school. I had I left the job for a long time, and that was my uh, how I made my money, right? Um, but I basically just came here because I'm like, well, you know what? I'm in between jobs. I'm in school for a while. I kind of got lost a little bit in that. I was in community college, and I really enjoyed that. Actually, first for a couple of years, I did that, and it just, I just really kind of felt like, boy, I would like to come here and be with my son, and so that's how I wound up in Columbus, Ohio. Um, I claim to be from Portland, Oregon. I'm essentially from Portland, Oregon. That's what I, I go by. Um, I'm from a lot of places, so that's that's the more realistic thing, but. Basically, Portland, Oregon 
is where I was born. So that's why I go with that. Um, I, uh, my parents, my mother is from Los Angeles, California. And um, my father uh, was born in Longview, Washington, technically. But his family basically lived most of their lives in Portland, Oregon. So he lived in Portland, Oregon most of his life. And uh, then he went to Nam. And uh, after he got back from Nam, this is, a, it, you know, it wasn't my life. I'm just telling a generic story about how I understand it to be. I basically got it back from Vietnam. He was in a couple terms in, in Vietnam, um, which he volunteered for. He wasn't drafted. So it's kind of interesting, um, I think. Um, but so he was in Los Angeles, California, and my mother was a waitress at Denny's, and she was, uh, you know, born in California and lived in California, Los Angeles, California. And so, you know, they uh, they uh, knew each other. And then um, there was a an earthquake that really... My dad lived in this apartment complex, and I guess he was an exterminator for a while. That's a job he got. And... Uh, he basically, uh, his whole apartment complex, like, uh, fell down. So he had no place to live. So my mother took him in, basically. And uh, so anyway, th that's essentially how they connected together. And um, they uh, lived back. We went back and forth to different places. we go basically where family would be. And um, we lived in, uh, you know, Los Angeles when I was a kid. We, and then we'd go back and forth between Portland and Los Angeles. And then at some point, uh, basically because my grandmother, my mom's mom, uh, she got divorced and then moved back to where her family was, was just Las Cruces, New Mexico. That's how I wound up in Las Cruces, New Mexico. And so from fourth grade on out of high school, I lived in Las Cruces, New Mexico. And then essentially my parents were like, you know, we're sick of this too. We're moving back to Portland. So that's how we went back to Portland. And uh, along the way, I learned art, and I just did art in school. I just my father was a painter. He, he was a visual painter, and he painted my whole life. And he didn't really pursue doing a lot of showing, but um, he would show here and there. And I never, I was too young to really even go to any of them. Um, and he went to college to learn a little bit more. He did some more stuff, but he pretty much was self-taught, as far as I can understand. He did oil painting, traditional oil painting. He did. A lot of that stuff. He did some graphite pencil and some other stuff, but that was like really minor. He mainly did oil painting, was traditional painting, um, landscapes, portraits, that kind of thing. Not like really famous people necessarily, but just that kind of thing. So, I mean, I was around that my whole life. My first cousin, who uh, is my mom's sister's first son, um, that was one of my other really huge influences in art. And I, I remember when we were really young kids. I don't, this is like way back, you know, we were real little playing on like the gym or what, playing on a little kid area. And my cousin, my first cousin, Joey Vega, he was like, uh, I'm going to go to college and become a visual artist, be a painter. And I was like, wow, you know, like, hey, my father's a painter. Let's talk to him about it. So when we were talking about that. And so from then on, I mean, basically he was influenced on a lot of things. He was four years older than me. So he would bring to my house, he would come over, they moved to New Mexico. So then we moved over there too. And basically, I knew him from back in the Los Angeles days, you know. And uh, so, uh, basically, um, he was he was four years older than me, and he basically would bring all these like the newest uh, music over. We did art together. He was in high school when I was in junior high, essentially, you know, because like I said, he's four years older than me. So he's one of the biggest artists um, that I personally knew that had done some with art, besides my father, who was a painter. Um, I just never really thought of ah, I I did drawing my whole life. I never thought of it. I'm gonna be a visual artist. It wasn't, I, I, you know, it was just something you did. I did it for fun. I really enjoyed it. It wasn't something I I'm gonna perfect this. I have to go. I just did it all the time. I drew all the time. I painted some like high school. I took some painting classes. I took from junior high on. I took uh, electives. I would always get A's in them because basically I thought I was talented. I think it was a lot of rapport with the teacher now, I think now. You're a little bit manipulative, you know, maybe. Um, just saying. This is already nine minutes. I was trying to make this simple and very sweet and kind of just... So maybe it's... But anyway, basically, <laughs> maybe I can wrap it up here just to make it simple. No, I wasn't trying to bore anybody. It's probably boring already. If I, three minutes, you're probably bored to death. Um, but essentially... My father and my first cousin were the visual artists in the family. I uh, 
I heard Van Halen. I was exposed to Van Halen from a Boy Scout friend of mine. And from then on, I was like hooked on Van Halen. I love them. And I saw all the videos and everything. And then I was like, I have to learn to play the guitar. I just have to. And realistically, in realistic terms, I never could play like Van Eddie Van Halen. I just never, I never could. I learned to tap and some of the stuff that he did. It just, I was more drawn to playing like the blues and just like weird experimental stuff that didn't fit in with anybody. No one knew what it was. I could play really fast. A lot of times I played on the same string even. I just, it was organic in my approach, you know, and it, it's, I guess if I had been exposed to jazz, I think I would have really dug jazz because there's a lot of stuff in jazz that's really free like that. And it just, my family didn't have anything to do with jazz. They didn't have any background on that, knew nothing about it. I wasn't exposed to any of that. So basically I just learned how to play guitar. I played guitar and that basically was over after high school. I still play the guitar today, but... I went into bands in high school that all fell apart. A lot of stuff happened. But um, essentially, in Columbus, Ohio, is where I started just going, you know what, I really want to try to paint. Um, I'll try to make it simple like that. Um, I don't like simple. I want to do all the details. The details matter. But this is already 11 minutes. I'm not looking to make a 30-minute video. So, But anyway, I'm trying to make some more videos. I'm going to make more blogs, vlogs, whatever they call them. It's just like the daily stuff, you know, that's happening in art, in my day's perspective. Um, it was kind of just supposed to be, you know, whatever. But So I just started painting here, and then about three years of painting or so, around whatever, you know, by 2008, I was like, kind of like, man, I really, it was like dawning in that I need to try to show, with, my ex-wife was like, she was pushy sometimes in certain things not a lot of things but some things i would be painting i'd be painting i had like tons of paintings on the ground they would any i didn't care about making shelves or anything i had all these paintings everywhere i would go to michael's and just buy like 16 by 20 canvases and they were relatively cheap you know five bucks a piece or whatever you can get a lot of paintings i could sit there and exp you know express myself and really get down into trying making the tons of paintings and get down the painting process not that there was any academic ability in there and like any academic process to learn painting it wasn't structured it was just like let's do more of it let's keep doing it i wasn't thinking i was going to show anywhere or just whatever right um so basically at some point she was like you know what are you what, what are you gonna do with this what are you gonna and I'm like I don't know I don't care I'm just painting what's your problem basically why on me about it and she got paintings everywhere you can't even sit down in there I had a little seat in between all my paintings they're all on the ground so I eventually made a shelf so that's why I knew it was 300 paintings by the time I even tried to show anywhere um, that's the story and I know if you saw any other videos or whatever not that there's a million of them but if you saw any other stuff you probably heard this mantra but that's essentially what happened. And then I was trying to figure out how to show. I got books on it. I was old by then. I'm old now, so deal with it. Whatever, you know? Eh, whatever. Um, hey, old people, just keep doing what you're going to do. What are you going to do, man? I had 20-year-old kids. Well, good, dude, give over. You're old. But, hey, I'm already old, so what are you going to do about it, man? You're going to be old, too, at some point, buddy. But, um, so anyway, so basically I was just like, man, I just really need to try to show anywhere. Let's start doing something, you know? And I was on Craigslist. I like Craigslist. A lot of people dog on Craigslist. The Craigslist killer. And a lot of things that happened to Craigslist was just damaging to Craigslist. But it has been a lifesaver for me. It's been like, it has been unequivocally the biggest thing in art for me. And that's going to sound crazy. Some people are like, what are you talking about? It's Craigslist. But the ability to show in different cities was basically because of Craigslist. Other people I've met, everything came from Craigslist essentially. Because I found an office space that I could put art in. And they, they're not like a gallery trying to scrutinize everything you're doing. They just want some art on the wall, right? So I took paintings, and that was like the beginning in uh, 2010. And then I saw 83 Gallery, and I was like, wow, I was blown away by that, you know. Um, which I had been to the Hop, you know, since 2008. The, the Hop in Columbus, Ohio is like this gallery strip. And it's kind of declining into like gentrification and and basically bars and restaurants now i i wonder at what point can you continue to say the gallery hop when there's only so many galleries there that's that's just my little disclaimer and of course it's really not impossible 
harder to get in those galleries. And like any gallery in general, as they get as they stay a long while, it's diff more difficult to get in there. They don't like to show local artists, you know. But anyway, that's my little whine about the hop. I went to the hop a bunch of times. My wife said, hey, let's go to the hop. You know, you like art. It wasn't anything I was going to try to show at or try to be an artist. I just, I like art. Um, so we go to the hop and everything. I never heard of 83 Gallery. It was about a block away from the hop. Um, it was on, you know, the, the reason it's called 83 because it was 83 West 1st Street. They had a house there. There's these two guys that just started a gallery out of their basement. It was a basically like a an art party, like a college party with art on the wall, basically. And it was a lot of college kids would show up. The whole place was like 30 to 50 college kids that were drinking, essentially. Um, but I found them, and they were they took me in. They allowed me to come in there and show. I met everybody that I've ever met, essentially. That within that, that certain amount of first artists that you knew or whatever, a lot of artists, they had a lot of artists they shown over 500 and something artists in the history of the gallery, more than that probably. Um, it was an open door that you could show. You could learn a lot of things. You could network with people. It was just what kind of what art should be, you know? Um, the pretentiousness and all the rest of the stuff in the art world, um, it doesn't mean that people can't be talented and there's some. There, maybe there should be some exclusivity in some of it. I don't know. But when you're starting out and you're struggling and you want to be an artist... Um, and you're trying to show somewhere, and you're trying to do art, you're already struggling with all these fundamental arguments of like, well, I don't even know if I'm an artist, I don't know if this is good enough, I don't know what I should be doing, what is the process, what is, how do you do the business side of it. I've shown with a ton of artists, especially at the beginning, they went to CCAD, they took one business class. I'm not saying I've mastered business, I haven't. But... They took one business class. It's almost like you had been better if you were business, um, if your major was in business, and then you decided to do art. Because there's a lot of stuff to do with business and art, unfortunately. It should be about the paintings. It should be about the artwork you're doing. But a lot of it has to do with business. This is going to be too long of a video. I'll probably have to not upload this, unfortunately. I'll make the first one long. So there's a lot of history here. So anyway, I showed with them an 83 gallery. They took me in. The second show, which I'll maybe do another video or something, maybe an animated video or something on it, because I think that's interesting. Um, I met Daniel from CS Gallery, Daniel Colvin, and Jeff um, Collins and Mick Wesson were the founders of 83 Gallery, um, the original co-founders. And uh, they were immediately hostile to Daniel, just saying that's just the honest truth. Uh, well, not Mick. Mick was cool, but Jeff. Jeff was just he has a personality about him. That's that's kind of how his personality is. There are certain things about him that are interesting. I mean, he's got a, he's got a quirky personality. He uh, he didn't like Daniel at all. I mean, but he also told me the first time I met him, um, he said other artists came to him and they said, "Man, I sold a piece for four hundred dollars somewhere else," and they were heartbroken in a way because they sold it with somebody else and. Even though Jeff had certain elements about him that, you know, some things you didn't like about him, you know, he was kind of hostile. There was other, th he'd put you down sometimes. There was other things that happened, you know, deep down in heart, in, deep down inside, he had, he was all good heart. He was a good person. And because he was so open to artists, he was bringing artists in, he opened the door to everybody. A, su a couple artists I know, they're going to disagree with this. They're going to argue about this. They don't like 83 or whatever. Fine, whatever. Um, other people that were on the outside of 83 that didn't see the inside, that maybe they established themselves, they did whatever, they had different, they had different experiences. They might argue this. There's always going to be someone who's going to argue this viewpoint, but that's my take on it. That's what I experienced. And, um, basically, um, they were hostile to Daniel, but they also said, we don't care if anybody shows anywhere else. We're not that, you know, exclusive. We don't have exclusive rights on the artist. He was really open like that. He really didn't want... You know, we have resident artists that we try to show that they show their work here every month. We wanted to do that, but we're not trying to, you know, we're not going to make artists under contracts or whatever. They didn't have anything formal to really prove, pull that off if they wanted, really. I mean, so there was like the Catch-22. They were trying to kind of do it uh, like Jeff was considered himself essentially like punk DIY. And I, I'd heard of this in the 80s. <laughs> I'm not old, like I said. I heard of this in the 80s, but I was just like, what? DIY? Okay, whatever. Whatever. 
But I mean, the place was awesome. You know, the 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 people were great. You met new artists every single time. There were more people. I heard of different all kinds of different other avenues. Chad Kessler, who came to the art the gallery after me, um, he was in art groups, and um, so I'm like, oh, there's something else called art groups. Whatever. This is, should be obvious to some people, but if you're just going through the motions of doing life, you don't. I'm not like see what. Let me see if there's art groups out there. That wasn't something I thought about. So it's like all this stuff is just like stumbling onto it, basically. Um, you know, so I was like, oh, there's art groups. Let me go. And uh, there was one I was in. I still am in, I technically. It's Cap City Creatives. And so I went to that one. And then I found all these other art groups. There's got to be some other art groups, right? Each art group has its own, like, nucleus. They all do different kinds of shows. They all do. And I am basically a show whore. Because I was just like, I, after I got into showing, I was like, it's a driver for you to produce more art. Sometimes it can be a problem because you might cut off what you normally would have done. So that's some people like to argue, well, you know, you should be whatever. I don't care. That's my pro. It suits me fine um, to have this driver. Like you got something to make the art and show it. That's so much better than just making the art. Um, I would like to focus just purely on the art and sit there and go, you know, let's let me just um, mature this piece of art and work on it. My art is essentially pretty simplistic connection. So it's not like I'm going to sit there and do layering and layering and layering and layering. I mean, I've done a lot of abstract painting. So I could see how you would do that. But I like the time of the moment in that, that kind of feeling and that thought and that um, concept. So going back and touching up a painting, maybe I might em embrace that. I'm not going to have square out anything, you know, 100%. But I, I really don't like that very much. I like in that moment you were painting it that on that day or maybe in a couple days even at max or whatever. And then um, you basically, that was the moment it was in. That was when it was developed. That was when you um, painted that. That's that capture in that moment, you know. Um, it's something like pop art really doesn't have 100% like that. But that's basically the idea. Or at least some of the ideas. I got a lot of these ideas, right? So, um, basically, yeah, I showed with them forever. I showed with them for five years till the gallery went under. I showed at CS Gallery three times a month for the beginning, um, you know, until the gallery went under, basically. Um, the last year, I kind of I kind of waned off showing there. I was kind of um, bored with it, I guess you might say. Um, it was a great space, but the promotions weren't as good as you'd want it. I don't think it was any Daniel's fault. It was just... It's just like the 83 had this flair about it. It had a, because it's 20-something-year-old kids probably, I'm thinking. Don't know. There was a lot of things they did. I mean, they drank beer there, basically. That was one of the bigger draws, too, in that one. There was alcohol there, so there was a party. People would go to the hop. They'd go to all the hop and everything. They would show up there, and it would be like a big concert. It would be, sometimes it was overwhelming in that regard, because you're trying to show paintings. By 9 o'clock, you couldn't really talk about the paintings. And I tried to express that and get that changed a little bit. Because I wanted to push paintings more than a band. But then I understood why that was such a big deal. They explained it to me. And I kind of agreed with that. I could see that. I was kind of torn on that. You have a band playing after nine. People stay around, right? They might check out the band. Then maybe after they have a good time with the band, they might buy a piece of art later. I'm all about the sales. I mean, I like to make just art for the purity of making art. And maybe someday I'll just embrace that. And I don't care about trying to make a sale. I don't know if you've ever tried to make a sale. And I think any artist dismisses that. Oh, I don't need to make a sale. I don't care about sales. Now, if you're trying to work on your technique and eventually you're going to look at sales, everybody cares about sales. Um, maybe, like I said, there's got to be a percentage that do not care about sales, never will try to sell a painting, do not care. And that's, you know, because there's a wide range of people. So fine, whatever, that's fair. But I think if you, because as soon as these artists that say they don't care about sales start making sales, then all of a sudden it's a big deal to them, you know? Well, hey, I hated it before. I didn't care. I just missed it maybe just because they weren't making sales. So just saying, um, the more in the show thing too is very similar in a way, very seductive because you want to be in a show. You're showing somewhere. I haven't gone up the ladder. I pretty much, unfortunately, I kind of stay with the same staple stuff I like doing. Once I can figure out where I can show... And so Daniel exposed me to basically showing other places in galleries. I tried to approach him, get it solo. He was like, ah, oh, you're not known, blah, blah, this whole thing. He was also a very mixed bag. Um, but then I sold paintings at his gallery. For a little bit, I was torn. I was thinking maybe I won't show there anymore because I've been on the outside. I felt demeaned a little bit, to be honest. 
He doesn't know that, but I felt like demeaned because I was kind of outside the gallery. There was like, artists in the gallery, and they'd be like, "Yeah, keep painting." Keep... And I was thinking, my paintings are actually better than yours. First of all, number one, that's what I felt like. Not that I hated their paintings, but to talk down to me was a little bit, you know, come on, buddy. Um, and you know, and a lot of them got degrees, so I got this issue with people with degrees and like their degrees, and then they were doing something completely than their degree was anyway. Like really? Okay. Yeah, sure. I got a degree in oil painting. I'm doing caustic now. Okay, so you self-taught in caustic. And then you're saying something about me. So I'm self-taught also. You have a degree, so you know something, so to speak. I wish I could get a, a master's degree in fine art just so I can dismiss painting fine art arguments. Really? You know. Anyway, just a little gripe there. But um, basically, I was getting a little bit sick of it. I was like, you know what, maybe I won't. And then I started selling pieces, so I'm like... Shut up, man. Who cares, buddy? You're selling pieces. I had my first sale at the CS, CS Gallery. And then Daniel was like, oh, you just want to show somewhere. Like, you want some solos or whatever. Hey, there's some some shops that'll put stuff up in there. And I had already done like a, you know, an office. But then I'm like, I realized like in bar settings, which is kind of a bad road to go down. It's good because you get to show everywhere. You can show up, find bars that they'll put you let list. And in Columbus, Ohio, at least, there's a lot, there's some galleries. A lot of them, nobody can get into. No artist from Columbus, Ohio can get into them. Very few. I mean, you're an exceptional, like, realistic painter. You can get, I, you know, there's a couple I know that actually were amazing painters. It's not like they were crappy painters. It's just, they were amazingly talented. They did a very small little thing that the, you could do. Not that I could do it, but, I mean, there's a very select amount of people that can do it. They fit into the gallery scene, so they were able to get into those galleries, Okay. But for the most part, most of us from the outside, you want to say or whatever, couldn't get in those galleries. And there's very few. So that you're like, well, I want to show still. If I, you know, I know a lot of artists. They don't want to show. Maybe they only want one show a year. I told you I'm a show whore. I don't like to sit around for a year waiting around. Well, okay, we're gonna do a show next July. I could be dead by next July. You know, I don't want to wait till next July. What's the point in waiting? If you're waiting around to be an artist, you're never gonna get there. Forget it. Just give it up. Why don't you just get a second job or something? I'm just saying, man. You could make a lot more money getting a second job or something like that. Now, if you put your paintings at a thousand dollars and you really hustle it, and you're amazing, talented, and you start selling pieces at a thousand, then hey, I'm, my argument goes out the window, right? Maybe you have a show every once a year because you can only have one solo a year. There's a whole bunch of political crap with it, you know, and political and systematic crap that goes along with the showing process it is great don't get me wrong i really love showing art but i t i tended to move towards that where it was very simple and i just talked to them i got my art on the wall i sold it to people that weren't going to galleries you know hey i'm going to the gallery you know there's a million people show up and they don't none of them buy any art and they don't care well they're there to drink the drinks and eat some uh cheese and whatever and it's like oh, okay cool yeah cool that was great i enjoy showing though so that's actually still good um but uh yeah it's so i'd be in a bar setting selling stuff for like 50 dollars, and you can argue whether that's valid or not but if you sell enough pieces at 50 bucks it's pretty fun i gotta say a sale is a sale that's that's joss parker's motto one of his old mottos from back in the day a show is a show um again that's a joss parker motto but i i, I kind of modeled myself a lot of my stuff after what he did because he was somebody that was more successful than me um, they teach you this in college. If you ever take community college, I was gonna. I took one architecture class. I thought maybe I'd want to do something with architecture. If you're trying to design a building, you don't just go out there and hey, just go out and design it. No, you figure out what building it is and you try to you mimic what that is until you can figure out what you're doing. You figure you, know, you derive derive your own ideas within that. What do you do? Oh well, I do this. I want to be in a band. What do I want to be? Are you gonna come up with your own completely incarnation of band? Maybe that's possible. But unlikely, more like more likely that you're gonna try to be somebody else or emulate somebody. So a lot of my stuff in pop in pop art and showing stuff has come from Josh Parker, and he has a bad rap with some people. Some people don't like him or whatever in Columbus, Ohio, and blah 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 blah. But personally, to me, he's been like a gold mine as personally as just as a friend in general, and it, it in the treasure trove of knowledge I'm showing. He was more advanced than me, still more advanced than me in seven years, you know. Um, just saying. Uh, anyway, that's where we're at kind of right now. It's 2017. I am trying to build up to bigger galleries, to galleries again. The galleries I was showing at went under. I'm still kind of uh, 
hustling. You call it hustle game, you know, still showing wherever I can show. I show at least once a month somewhere. Um, trying to do bigger solos all the time instead of group shows. Um, but really, again, it's just anything, you know, still anything. I'm still doing any kind of show I can still be in. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to push that to a higher level. With these vlogs, it's 30 minutes now, I gotta cut it. With these vlogs, I'm just gonna do daily stuff. I'm gonna do some skits coming up. Um, it'll be different stuff that's not really necessarily your painting visual art stuff. So, if you sat through this whole video, I appreciate it. I'm looking at the screen on the side, so maybe that's crap. But, if you want to subscribe to this, I promise you they won't be 30 minutes after this one, okay? I'm going to try for just 10 minute videos and that's it or less. I was going to do 5 minute videos, but if you can tell I'm long winded, it's going to be really long. Um, hopefully I can contain it to 10 minutes, but we're going to be the daily stuff. So it's not going to be like everyone's going to be 30 minutes. So I wanted to have a little bit more history in this video so you can see at least a bit, a little bit of history. And of course it's going to be hopefully more visually appealing, just my face on a screen. I can understand how that could be boring. I'm sorry if it is boring. But if you wanted to subscribe and like with this video and leave a comment at the bottom, whether whatever the comments are, I actually will read the comments and try to respond to some level to so maybe in a video or something about the comments. So thanks for sitting through this. If you have sat through this whole this whole time, I really appreciate it. Um, and like I said, I'm going to try to make it more visually appealing. These will just be vlogs, but they'll be the day-to-day -day operations of art and stuff like that's going on. So thank you for so watching this. I appreciate it. Bye.